Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. This class is called the Wilderness of God, the Wilderness of the Most High. Now, um, and this is not talking about how to prepare for a crisis, a natural crisis, but this is more so on a spiritual level. Uh, how can we prepare for the next wilderness? Because we will be back in it. Matter of fact, we're going to read that a little later. But let's get something real quick before we get into that. Let's get the book of uh, St. John, chapter 14, verse 6. The book of John, chapter 14, and verse 6. And we're going to use a lot of what Christ went through to prepare us for this second journey, or our first journey uh, through the wilderness. So let's read this real quick. John, chapter 14, and verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, I was looking at these three attributes, right? The way, we read about the scripture says, the way had, the, uh, um, through certain parts of the scripture said, the way of life had basically departed. Everybody lost their way. Um, and then it tells you in Hebrews that the way of the holies was not yet revealed. I'm going to read that real quick. Let's get that real quick in Hebrews, matter of fact. I have you read it. Hebrews, what is it? Hebrews 8? 9. Hebrews 9. Let's get verse 8. Okay. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 8. The Holy Ghost. This signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. So what this means is the way of the holiest, that is to the most high, that is the direct link, the temple, going behind the veil, the first veil, which separated the first tabernacle from the second. That veil separated us from the holiest of all, which is basically in the presence of the most high God, God the Father. It says the Holy Ghost, this signifying or representing that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. It says, yet not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was yet standing. This is why when Christ died, the veil rent. So that way we had direct access to the holiest of all or a direct link to the Father because he made it possible through his blood. As before, we saw through a glass darkly. We didn't have that direct link until Christ became the Lamb of God. This is when you also read that he, instead of going before a high priest, he went up into the heavens and stood before the Father in his presence. That's a whole nother level above Aaron, the high priest, because he stood in the building. Christ stood in the actual heavens before the Father. So that way was closed off. This is why he said, I am the way. Let's go back to St. John. John, chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the truth. Now we know that truth has also been hidden from the earth because of what the scribes and the Pharisees had been doing by the examples of what they taught. So we know that truth, eventually, the scripture says in the book, in the book in the, uh, what's it, Isaiah 60, it says, gross darkness cover the earth. And gross darkness was the people. Let's get that real quick in Isaiah 60. There's a reason why we're reading all of this. This is not the class, but or this is not the topic. But I want to. I'm, I'm expounding on this for a reason. Read uh, verse 60, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Arise, shine, 
for thy light is come. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. Read. And the glory of all the Lord is risen upon thee. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. For gross, it says the, the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness and the gross people. gross darkness the people. You understand when you get a check and you talk about that gross, that's the large amount, right? It says... This darkness was so bad, it's the gross darkness, the, is the epitome of sin. We're living in that time. We was going through that in the morning class where now you had uh, two people in Jersey, brother and sister, they said after a long case of 10 years of battling, they now can become man and wife. Two sisters, I mean two bro uh, brother and sister, after a long battle of 10 years fighting this case, they now become, they can become husband and wife. This is where we live. And again, that's just one of the things that we were reading about. It's so, it's just so many more. I mean, it's so many more. But it says, gross darkness shall cover the earth. Uh, darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness, the people. Read on. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Okay, so that's how the truth was departed from the earth. So now Christ showing us who he is he says he is the way the truth and the life let's get that let's go back to where we were back in saint john 14 verse 6. john chapter 14 and verse 6 jesus said unto him i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me and lastly the life men didn't have life until christ shed his life it tells you that our forefathers, they ate bread in the wilderness and they all perished. It says, labor not for the bread which causes you to hunger, but for the bread that endured forever. He was the bread. So he basically was the beginning of life when he shed life. So it says, he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by him, but by me, right? So now, the reason why I want to pull this verse is because he said that I am the way. The reason why we're, we're we're going into a topic like uh it's called a topic like this called the wilderness of god because like i said we're going to go back into the wilderness and everything that we're about to read about christ he basically gave us the keys to make it through this second wilderness trial our forefathers didn't have christ they followed christ they rocked which they do not he led them through the wilderness but they dealt with this on their own. This time now we have a prime example of what it is to actually make it through the wilderness. We're gonna read some of that a little later. From that, let's get the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse one. He is literally the way. He is literally the path. He showed us how to do it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse one. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse one. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed and, and, about. And just a side note, it's impossible for you to make it if you don't believe in Christ. It is absolutely impossible. So if you are a person that don't believe in Christ, it's time to learn him. It says, learn of me. That's what Christ says. Take of my yoke, it is easy to bear. Learn of me. Because it is impossible for you to make it and please the Father if you don't have his example on trust in his example. And the example that God set before us because he said, this is my son who I'm well pleased. That is the instruction on how to be a, how to be pleased with the Most High. Um, let's get that Hebrews chapter twelve verse one. Hebrews chapter twelve and verse one. Wherefore, see, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so a great cloud of witnesses. These witnesses are referring to the men and women that we read about in the scriptures. Um, um, uh, overcoming certain situations and we look at it and say okay this is how they deal with it this is how they dealt with it when it came down to overcoming anger or the spirit of uh, jealousy or the spirit of bearing a grudge hatred emulation that's wanting to copy somebody else you see somebody doing better than what you do so you cover that spirit and you try to diminish what they do so you can outshine them Preeminence, right? Or uh, variance, uh, uh, having the spirit of contention. It says, we had a great cloud of witnesses that had to deal with those things and they overcame it. It says, we, we don't, basically, he's saying we don't have an excuse. We have too many people 
that have been there and done that and showed us how to overcome it. We have a great cloud of witnesses. Read on. Let us lay aside every weight. So being that it was easy for them to do it, and also have it in a book to where it can be told about, they obviously, they obviously overcame it. So it said, being that we have a great cloud of witness, let us, let us lay aside every weight. The weight is, I mean, again, it's not saying just get over it, because again, these things are going to be hard. Certain things that you go through are going to be hard. But what are you supposed to get over? And the, Saying to yourself that I cannot do it. Because you have people that actually did it. Don't give up on yourself. That's what you, lay, lay aside that. That's the sin. When you doubt the most I saying when you're incapable of doing it. You ask anything in the Father, he said he'll give it to you. You got to have, first what? A believing heart. And, and, and uh, what the scripture says in James? Uh, a heart not wavering. So it says, lay aside every weight. And what? And the sin. And the sin. So lay aside that weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us which doth easily beset us you say e easy easily beset us read or throw us off the path read and let us run with patience the race that is set before us that race is called life okay we all gotta run it every last individual in this room it said let us run with patience the race that is set before us read on Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So the reason why it's worded that way, because now we, he's going into another uh, 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 witness that ha actually has done it and finished it and actually seen the result of what it is to finish. It says, let us look unto Jesus, the author. This is what you would call the creator of a story or a creator of um, the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I just say the word creator. It says, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Read on. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Despising the shame. And despising what shame? People saying that, I thought you was the son of God. Why are you sitting up on a cross begging for help when you was able to heal everybody else but look at yourself? He despised all of that. He took all of that. And he didn't do anything about what they said he just took it because he knew he's, he's seen the bigger picture read on and is set down at the right hand of the throne of god so who is a who is the best example we can look to to say that you know what i can do it because he overcame it christ because not only he went through that persecution he finished it he died in it and he overcame by what gaining the position of being next to the father being able to comfort us because he was also, he also had to go through it. So now he has now the ability to give us the advice to overcome those things. Again, the wilderness of God. We're going to see the correlation between those two stories about how Christ was tempted in the wilderness and our journey in the wilderness, our forefathers' journey in the wilderness. Before we get that again, we're going to go right to it, Matthews. But before we go there, go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Yes, sir. Hey, and that, that's why um, that Immaculate Conception Doctrine is dangerous because they try to make it seem like Christ wasn't an actual man. Exactly, right. right. But knowing that he was a, a man just like me and you, he was tempted, it proves that if he was able to do it, we can do it as well, mm -hmm. right? So once again, that's why that doctrine is out there to make it seem like nobody can do what Christ did because he was uh, of an angel, right? Right. So... That's that, and you believe that doctrine that gives you. I mean, that just that's an excuse to sin. It's basically what and nobody can be perfect, right? Right, Christ was an angel because when you read scriptures like, well, he was a lamb, or it was a he was a man without sin, without any blemish. But say, yeah, well, because he was an angel of God, right? Right, he was a human being. That was that's a good point because even at even at that unknowingly, we do it in the world with worldly concepts. Like when you go to fix your credit, you go to repair your credit. You don't go to somebody with bad credit so you can repair your credit. Or if you go to establish a house, you go to somebody that knows finances. You go to somebody skilled in that aspect. So when we're talking about uh, the wilderness of God, preparing your spirit for it, who better to go to than the Son of God that walked perfectly? So you should follow in that footsteps. Right. That's what basically cap is going over. All praises, I'm glad you pulled that example. You gotta go to somebody with experience. Mm -hmm. So let's get that. We actually go out to read that too. Hebrews chapter four, verse 14. 
Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. So seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, referring to Christ, read. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Let us hold fast our profession. Read on. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched which, with the feeling of our infirmity. So where did they get that, that Christ was an angel? He said, we don't have an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. I mean, every weakness is that you were born with, the spirit of guilt, this name's on, the spirit of guilt, frustration, anger, uh, depression, low self-esteem. It says, we have not an high priest which, can, which cannot be touched with the feeling, how you feel about it, with the feeling of our infirmities, the weaknesses. That's what that word infirmities mean. Read on. But test, test. But was was in all points. But was in all points on all areas in all areas of being of being tempted. Read on. Tempted like as we are yet without sin. Without sin, he was able to do it, but he did not sin. Now, just FYI, being tempted is not the sin. Temptation is not sin. Though. It makes you feel like, man, I can't believe I even thought about that. You feel feel disgusted with yourself. Right. That's not the sin. That's Satan. That, that's all it is. The sin is when you act out on the temptation. Everybody's going to get tempted. That's the whole purpose of this spirit being created. I create light. I create darkness. I create good and evil. That spirit is here to tempt us to see whether or not we're going to fall at the most high. So being tempted, don't feel like you now have to give up. You got people saying that. I don't want to come to the school because I don't want to put that spirit on other people because I don't feel like I'm in the spirit. Well, did you commit an act? Did you sin? No, you didn't. You feel that way. So what would tell you to stay away or what, or from a group of people that go through the same thing that would be able to guide you from it? The devil. Again, temptation is not the sin. It's what you act upon from that temptation. If you have a temptation, you know what? Man, I, I, I don't have the money, but... <laughs> Man, back then, I would have stole that. Back then, I would have stole that. That's not the sin. The sin now, if you would have took that phone and you put it in your pocket and walked out the store, now you acted upon it. But now, you, that whole conflict of, man, I, that right there is a trial. That scene where, that right there, the most I've seen where it can go. Whether you're going to do good or do bad. Bad is taking the phone, putting it in your pocket, leaving it out, out the store. You understand? It's not being tempted. I want everybody to understand that because we can really destroy ourselves if we just ponder on whether or not I am dimmed or, con or condemned because I thought about it. That's not the sin. The only thing, only thing that uh, can be sin about that is if you lust at the woman in your heart. That could be the sin. You understand? But if you if you if you rebuke that thought and you don't entertain those thoughts, that's not the sin. You understand? I make I make myself clear. I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna say it again. If you act upon that thought, the lustful thought, meaning you entertain the thought. Regardless if you sleep with that person or not, you entertain that thought, that is the sin. But if the thought pop in your head and you rebuke that thought, no sin actually came out of it. You understand that? You didn't act upon the thought and you didn't entertain the thought. Right. That's the difference. Okay, I want to make sure I make that clear. Hey, right, so what does the Bible say about temptation then? You know, what does the Bible say about temptation? Brother Jonathan, let's do one person. Oh, uh, with the Bible, Shalom. What the Bible says about temptation is that it is not from God. It's from every man's enticed when he's uh, drawn away out of his own lust. Okay, so go to Sirach 2 and 1. That's what. So, Captain is letting you know that it's not um, the thought, it's not the temp it's the temptation, is not the sin. So Sirach 2 and 1 tells you something about, te about temptation. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. No, it says prepare thy soul for temptation. 
So we're saying, be ready for the temptation to come. Prepare yourself. So when a thought does happen, you can overcome it. You won't. If you prepare yourself for the temptation, for the thought, that means when the thought comes to your head, like Cap was saying, you won't act on it. You won't. You won't commit the sin by thinking about something that follow on doing it. So the Bible is telling you, prepare to be tempted. It's going to happen. If you not, if you don't get tempted, you're not alive. Basically. You will be the only one. Only the only way you won't get tempted again is when you are not on the earth anymore. As long as we're alive, we're gonna get tempted. So we gotta prepare our soul for temptation. Keep reading verse three. Verse two: Set thy heart aright, and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. So it says constantly endure, constantly endure the thoughts that's gonna go through our heads, gonna want, that's gonna cause us to want to sin. But we should not act on the thought, that's the temptation. So prepare. Everybody, I mean, you, we gotta keep preparing until Christ come back for different temptations to come at us. Okay, so let's go back, um, uh, go from that, go back to Hebrews. So yeah, he told us to prepare for it. I mean, it is coming. It is coming. Some of us already going through it now. Through this whole virus situation, everybody standing at home, different things. Your job might have let you go. You name it, you know, things are not coming the way they should be, or, you know, financial status change, I'll say that. It, it, Y'all know it's, it's not the same. You can tell that spirit, the spirits are now enhanced. They know, the Satan says, you know him but a short time, you, you gotta wrap it up. So, we all are going through it. So, again, Christ told us to be prepared for situations like this. So let's go back to Hebrews. Read 4 now, read verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. We finish off 15, verse 12. Go ahead. Verse That's 12. Good. Verse 11. Verse 11. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 11. Uh -huh. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. So being, now all of this, the conversation before this verse was talking about if Jesus or Joshua led him into the place of rest, he wouldn't have spoken about another place of rest, talking about a land. So jumping down to verse 11, it says, let us therefore labor to enter into his rest. The rest is talking about that other place of habitation, new heavens and new earth. It's talk, telling us that we gotta labor again to enter into that rest, same way our forefathers labored. They didn't do it the right way, but they labored. So it says, let us therefore labor to enter into his rest, read on. Lest any man fall after the same example. Lest any man fall after the what? The same example of unbelief. So we have some examples in our history of unbelief. It says, beware lest any man fall to the same example of what? Unbelief. We had examples of that. Let's read those examples real quick. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Talking about the Red Sea passing. Jump down to verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Read. But with many of them, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. How did God feel about us? God was not well pleased, Three. for they were overthrown in the wilderness. For we were overthrown in the wilderness. Read on. Now, these things were our examples. These things, again, this is for us reading it. All of these things were what? Were our examples. All these things were our examples. Read. To the intent, we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. Now, all these things happened unto them. All these things happened unto them. For in symbols. For what? For in symbols. For an example. Read on. And they are written for our admonition. For our admonition. Things that we should be aware of. Read on. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. That's where, that's where the scripture includes us. These things were written for our examples upon whom the ends of the world should come. That's us. That's this generation. Or maybe the next. We don't know when the sun is gonna, the most high sun is gonna return. But it says those things were written for our examples to upon whom the ends of the world should come. 
from that real quick let's get what happened in the wilderness or what the whole wilderness experience was about or what it's going to be about let's get the book of ezekiel chapter 20 verse 33. Ezekiel. same thing it was about back then is the same thing it's going to be about today it says the lord god is the same yesterday today and forever he does not change it says that also in malachi so it's going to be the same 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 thing going down in the wilderness this time ezekiel chapter 20 start at verse 33. ezekiel chapter 20 verse 33 as i live said the lord god surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with a fury poured out and with a fury poured out so it's not going to be beautiful when we leave our body here. it's going to be chaos as we see it now going down read will i rule over you and what's going to happen and I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered Read. with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm uh -huh. and with fury poured out. Mind you, this is future, future tense, right? This is future prophecy. This has not yet happened. It says, as I live, said the Lord, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury, I will rule over you. It's not talking about Moses. It's talking about God this time. His son, Christ. Right? It says, I will bring you, read verse 35. Verse 35. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. And there will I deal with you face to face. As your, as what happened with you and Moses. This time, I'm going to be there face with you face to face. Read on. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness Read. Of, of the land of Egypt. And in the same way he did it. Read. So will I plead with you, said the Lord. Read. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. This is the point we wanted to deal with. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. Read. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Now. Let's get some understanding of what this this uh, this verse right here means. It says, and I will cause you to pass under the rod. You have that uh, link? Can you pull that up? This is uh, BibleTools.org. I want to just read uh, about the, yeah, you can uh, exit that out, that little floating tab. Or uh, just move it out of the way. There's no X on it? Okay, there we go. Now, the part that I wanted to get to, uh, let me see. Go down. Go down, let me see. All right, hold on, stop right there. Uh, all right. Okay, you see right there, the recall Matthews 25. Yes, sir. The rod aids in identifying. Read that. Recall Matthew 25. In the separation of the sheep of the and the goats, the rod aids in identifying or making sure of possession. Sheep's ears were often bored through or distinctively notched as a mark of identification. So the shepherd would bore the ear, the ears of the sheep to label it this is my property read sometimes since the shepherds could not always see that identifying mark due to the flocks due to several flocks being mixed together in the pasture they would make the sheep pass under the rod when they did the shepherd would flip back the ear to see the mark of the possession okay the rod is a stick okay go ahead Again, it also gave them a chance to evaluate and determine. So the purpose of this rod was to give them the chance to do what? Evaluate and determine the relative health and quality of that sheep. So the purpose of the rod was to determine whether this sheep was actually of good health. What is it? A, a, a relative health and a good quality uh, to evaluate, you know, to, to, to check your stock. So the, they would pass under the rod and like, okay, no, nope, not this was no good. This one is good. They would determine by passing under the rod whether this one was good for sale or whether this was good for food by them identifying the sheep which passed under the rod. So now going back to what we just read in Ezekiel, it said all of us are going to pass under that rod. The Most High is going to pick out from amongst us which one is not good relative of health, but more so 
which one of these sheep is good quality without sin that is a rebel which one is actually going to follow me not going to be rebellious he's going to check our status in the wilderness he's going to see what we're actually made of by the process that he's going to bring us through we're not going to pass under a stick the rod is the temptation that he's going to bring us through in the wilderness but again this is why we're going to read about christ because christ actually went through the wilderness and he dealt with certain things that our forefathers dealt with in the wilderness but he gave us a way again he gave us a way to deal with it this time around about they didn't have that example we have one now we're going to read about it shortly real quick get uh, um leviticus 27 verse 32. leviticus 27 verse 32. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock. This again dealing with that rod so we can get more understanding on it. This is a precept to it. Go ahead. Even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. So whatever pass under the rod, it shall be holy unto the Lord. Read on. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. And if he change it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy. Because it already passed under the rod, it was considered holy. So now you can't go back and now try to exchange it for one holier than that. You do that, both are going to be holy. It passed under the rod, that is accepted. So I just went here to show you what that rod is all about. Proving whether or not we are accepted or good quality. So now let's go to Matthews chapter 3 verse 13 remember how I, how the most high god felt about our forefathers in the wilderness it says what he was not well pleased with them because of their unbelief let's get matthew chapter 3 and let's read verse 13. matthew now we're going to compare these stories together christ was an example of acceptance let's get that matthew chapter 3 verse 17. matthew chapter 3 and verse start of 16. verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Uh -huh. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So it says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So we have an example of what it means to not please the Lord. Our unbelief, we lusted after things in the wilderness, we served other gods, we tempted the Most High. These are examples that we read in 1 Corinthians of what it doesn't mean to be pleasing to the Most High. And now we're reading about Christ who actually pleased the Most High. And how did he please the Most High? You have to go back and read 1 John. He was with the Father in the beginning. Everything that he was constructed to do, he did it. That's why when he created, the Father put a stamp of approval on it. It is good. It was he that was in the beginning with the Father, and the Word was called God. The Word was with God. So he did everything that pleased the Father, but he came in human flesh, born by Joseph and Mary. So getting straight to the point, it says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Read on, chapter 4, verse 1. Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So now, the Spirit caused Christ to be now lifted up and go into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Read on. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God. Now, it was already said that Christ was the Son of God. He, they, everybody heard God say, that he was the son of God. This is my beloved son. But Satan, how Satan came at Christ would say, you, you sure you the son of God, right? You in this wilderness, you have no food. You're the son of God. So he's making him look at himself and say, okay, I am the son of God, but I'm out here, I'm vulnerable, I'm weak. I'm fasting 40 days. I have no food. He said, you know what? Now that I already instilled a, a, doubt, a, 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 a seed of doubt, how about you turn these these stones into bread? Read on. Command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It was written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So he quoted something that we're going to read about our forefathers in the wilderness. So let's get that real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse, three, uh, verse 2. Now we can kind of see where these stories are going, how they relate. 
we have an idea of why the Spirit led Christ to be tempted, to give us an example how our forefathers were tempted, but he actually overcame. Let's get that. Uh, what's it? Deuteronomy 8? Yes, sir. Let's read verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee. And He's thou shalt remember all the way, everything that happened. Not the way which you came from, so you can remember how to go back. Remember all the way, everything that transpired. Remember that. Read. These 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee. To humble you. That's the reason why I brought you in the wilderness and walked you around these years. To humble you, read. And to prove thee. This is why the Spirit led Christ to the wilderness to be tempted. Read. To know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Read. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest uh, not, yeah. neither did thy fathers know. That he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord so he, doth men live. So he says, he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did that thy fathers know, that he might make thee to know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. Uh, by everybody that see it out of the mouth of the Lord do it live real quick read this precept because we got to get understanding of what he was talking about he's not saying that you don't need bread to live that's not the point that he was getting at when he said it he was making a statement what statement first let's read that the book of Sirach Ecclesiasticus chapter 29 verse 21 now, a lot of the precepts that I have I'm just gonna have him to read them. y'all can just write them down because if we go to every precept we probably won't have time to finish the class. So read that. The chief thing for life is the water. The chief thing, the principal things, the most important things, read. For life what? For life is water. Is water. And bread. And bread. And clothing. And a house to cover shame. So bread and water is one of the chief things of life. So he wasn't saying that you don't need bread to live. What he was saying that you don't need bread he said, you don't live by bread. You don't live off of bread. You need it to live, but you don't live by it. That shouldn't be your, 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 your desire in the world to just only have. And what, what satisfies your spirit is to live by the Most High's word. And that's the example that he showed when the devil tempted him. Why don't you turn these bread, these this stones into bread? He's tempting them with insecurity. You, you really believe you're the son of God? Okay, look at your condition. If you're the son of God, okay, turn these, these stones into bread. No, that will overthrow the mission. I don't live by bread alone. I understand the bigger picture. I'm here that I might be an example to those that may follow after me. Man should not live by bread alone. So he got past that phase. And I wrote some things down. That's how devil, one of his, that's one of his first attempts. He's gonna put doubt in our minds to test to see if we're really loved by the most high, to see if we're really, are really content with the things that we have. To tempt us with these materialistic things. So he's going to put, first thing, first thing, doubt. So we're going to suffer with insecurity, loyalty. The Most High is going to trust our loyalty to see if we will be obedient. If the Most High, if that job offered you that job on the Sabbath, and they say you're going to get paid twice more than what you're doing, are you going to take it, or are you going to rely on the Most High's words? Don't work on the Sabbath. If you trust, I'm going to give you a job better than the one he's offering you right now. Hey, Cap. Mm -hmm. I can get a quick scripture because what you going into, what you going into, the uh, this this has been told to all of us, and what he's telling you. Um, give me um Matthew. Go to Matthew chapter six and read verse uh, twenty three. Was, he wasn't telling you to uh, take substance away from your body like Cap was saying, mm -hmm. but what he really was going into, he covered in Matthew, right? Read that Matthew chapter six verse thirty three. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 uh -huh. but seek ye first the kingdom of God uh -huh. and his righteousness uh -huh. and all these things shall be added unto you so that's what he was telling me be concerned about the kingdom of God mm. and those things that that your body needs like how captain brought out in Sirach 29 a house to cover shame of food food for your body water those things God said you shall it shall be added to you you shall have it. So if you get that thought in your mind to figure out, does God really hear my prayers? I ask for these things. I don't have it. 
you know where that spirit is coming from. Again, one of Satan's tactics is to tempt you with insecurity. Is God really hearing your prayers? He said in the scriptures, if you ask anything in his name, he'll give it. Right. To basically treat God like a genie, like all you gotta do is ask for something and it's gonna pop out of nowhere and then you don't get it. Satan has a point. I asked for it and I didn't get it. Something is not right. Am I worthy? Man, I mean, is God hearing me? Is this really the truth? Again, all of these things, and this is the, the trickle effect of it. And that's what Satan was trying to do to Christ. If you're really the son of God, why don't you turn these stones into bread? And who did he do it on first? Again, we're reading this for a reason. Our forefathers in the woods. Let's get some examples of that. Let's get Numbers chapter 21, verse 5. And get wisdom of Solomon, 18, verse 6. And can you pull up uh, the definition of certified? Read Numbers 21, verse 5. Numbers chapter 21, and verse 5. And the people spake against God. Hold and on, let me get there with you. I'm sorry. All right. I said 21, verse 5, right? Yes, sir. Read verse 4. Numbers chapter 21 and verse 4. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea the, to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much dis discouraged. And the soul of the people was much discouraged. We were agitated. Mind you, we had been walking for some time. We were aggravated. We were discouraged, impatient because of the way. Read. Because of the way. And the people spake against God. Who did they speak against? And, and the people spake against God. Again, you got to understand where that spirit came from. What put what puts in your mind to talk against God? Satan. Same thing he tried to do with Christ. Right. We're going to read it. Hold on. It says, read on. It says that, and people spake against God and Moses. And against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? It says, wherefore have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Insecurity. Question about your purpose. We've been delivered not too long ago. You said that we protected by the Most High. We're the sons of God. Why are we going through this? Insecurity. Now trying to destroy your loyalty. Your confidence about who you are. The Most High didn't lead you into the wilderness or to destroy us, but again, this was that thought that Satan put in their mind. Doubt. He brought us a doubt. He brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness. Read that real quick. What you got in Muslim of Solomon? Matter, matter of fact, read what you got in, 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 in um, Numbers, and then read Muslim of Solomon. In Numbers, and then read Muslim of Solomon. For there is no bread. Neither is there any water, and our soul loathe this light bread. This is why we read back in Deuteronomy. He says, remember all the way which I brought you out of Egypt. Apparently, we didn't remember. The most I just walked us out of Egypt. Ten plagues that happened. You think he couldn't give you food and water? Wow. Obviously, he was trying to show you something. That man don't live by bread alone. Tests failed by them, accomplished by Christ. That's why it says, look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He was the prime example to get past that tape, that phase that Satan tempted our forefathers with. Now, read that real quick. Wisdom of Solomon. Which verse? Wisdom of Solomon 18, verse 6. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 6. Of that night, or of our, that night, the or, night before we left out of Egypt, were our fathers certified. Our fathers was certified. Get that definition, read that. Get Webster's um, definition. There we go. Read that. Uh, Miriam's Webster's dictionary uh, certified. It says having earned certification. I don't even like that definition. I read yeah. one last night that hit home. Let's go go down. Try to send it in. Yeah, try to send it in. What do you got it? Says authentic. Here we go. Bona fide. Bona fide. Certifiable. Certified. Right. Uh, Thinking. Read some recent one that we understand. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what that is. Genuine. Genuine. Real. Honest. That's real. Genuine. Right. Honest. Uh, real. Right. right. Sure enough. Sure, sure enough. True. 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 Right. Anything contrary to that will be fake, bogus, counterfeit, false, mock, phony. It says our forefathers was certified the night before. Read on. 
Uh, it says, of that night were our fathers certified afore, that assuredly knowing unto what oaths they had given credence, they might afterwards be of good cheer. They said afterwards be in good cheer. So how do we get to the point where we're not in good cheer? Say had already tempted us. We were certified before. We knew that this was real. It was honest. It was right. It was genuine. It was bona fide. It was authentic. Right. For us now to get into the wilderness and question whether God would actually come through and give us food that he gave us also in Egypt. We look at that, that that came from the Egyptians. It, you get food and water, period, is from the Most High. But we overlook all that because of the situation that we was in. So Christ was trying to show us through his example, 40 days and 40 nights, I'm going through this for a purpose. It's not about the status that I am now. Satan tried to tempt us like, okay, to have gain is godliness. But we know through scripture it says having godly, having gain with, what it says, having, help me out. Having godliness with gain. Having God, say, say it again. With Having godliness with content is great gain. Okay, so Satan tried to confuse him with that. So let's get another one. Let's get um, number 16, verse 23. So that was a down for insecurity. Now let's get one about the confidence. The book of Numbers. Numbers 16, verse 2. We're going to read 2 to 3. Numbers chapter 16 and verse 2. And there rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation. They were famous in the congregation, well-renowned men. They were known amongst everybody, read. Men of renown. And they gathered themselves together they against gathered Moses. themselves together against Moses. And against Aaron. And said unto them, Ye take too much upon you. Again, the same spirit that Satan was using to have them to get discouraged in the wilderness. Look at your position. You walking around, this man clearly don't know what he's doing. He led y'all out of Egypt, but he really has lost his way. I tell you what, everybody has your attention. You got respect among everybody. Why don't you question his position? And they say, hold, hold up. I know we ain't dumb. Everybody know us just as well just as well as they know him. Matter of fact, he was gone 40 years before anybody found out about him, who he was. We known everybody in Egypt. We was going through the we was going through the thick of uh, what it means to be oppressed. He come back 40 years later, deliver everybody now, he don't know where he's going. We got some say so into this. Read on. Seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them and the Lord is among them. Everybody here has the Lord among them. So, Moses, you need to give some of this attention that you have on yourself and let everybody have a say so on where we're going because you don't know where you're going. Mm -hmm. We definitely seen this see before. I know I've seen that tree before. So you obviously don't know where you're going. Right. But again, this is all Satan's plot to get us to, to tempt the Most High to, to distrust in his guidance, which was set up through Moses. Let's get back to Matthews. That's one, again, Christ knocked that out of the way. Man should don't live by bread alone. Being faithful and loyal to the Most High's word. Uh, go, you had, you had a question, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, back at, Numbers 21 and verse 5, at the end of the verse it says, and our soul love is like bread. So would that go into him saying we hate this temptation as far as we should pass it? They was, uh, you talking about when they said our soul loathed the bread? Right. They got discouraged with the bread. They was eating that every day. It was like, we gotta have something better than this. We had cucumbers, leeks, they had a list. We had cucumbers, leeks, and everything back in Egypt. Now we got manna. Right, right. That's all we got. You brought us out here to eat bread? Basically, that was their thought. So yeah, we became unappreciative. So let's go back to Matthews. Matthew chapter four, read verse five. Matthew chapter four, and verse five. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him, set, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God. And again, that same tactic, questioning who you are. If you be the son of God, read. Cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, 
and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou, thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now, what he wants him to do is look at how he can get things out of God. He, then he, look, 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 what he, look what, hold on, read it again, read it again. I'm going to Verse 6. Verse 6. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, If you be the Son of God, Cast thyself down. Cast yourself down. For it is written, I couldn't get you with persuasive, the, uh, the persuasive speech. So now I'm going to use scripture. I'm going to use something that you actually relate to. This could be the angel coming in an angel as an angel of light. Be your family members coming away in, a, in, a, in a, a, a crafty type of way to get you to question God. So he used scriptures. It is written in the scripture, read on. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now, to get some understanding on why he pulled that, let's get Psalms 91 verse 9. Psalms chapter 91 verse 9. Psalms chapter 91 and verse 9. Because thou hast, because thou hast made the Lord. Hold on. Go ahead. Because thou hast made the Lord. Read verse 8. Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because before in verse 1 it talks about dwelling in the secret place of the Most High and you were going to abide under his shadow and he was going to be your fortress. If you trusted him, he was going to deliver you from the snare, the foul, and the noisome pestilence. And he was going to cover you with feathers. So it says, only with your eyes or you're going to behold the, and see the reward of the wicked. Read on. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my, re my refuge. Because you've made the Lord your refuge. Read. Even the most high, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. And you know this? Putting the Lord as your refuge, ain't no evil going to befall you. Read on. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Read. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. Read. To keep thee in all thy ways. And keep thee in all your ways. Read. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So you see how Satan tried to come at him? Use your, 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 uh, your power to get what you want from God. You, use that to your advantage. Just ask him. Jump from this building. And the Most High is going to save you. Tip the Lord. Right. That's basically what our people are tempting on every day. Look, all, all you get, Jesus on the main line. Tell them what you want. How many of you heard that song? I know I heard it. <laughs> Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I want a car. I want a house. I want a wife. I want a husband. I want a job. I want children. Anything. Just tell him, and if you don't get it, something's wrong. Because you said, if you put your trust in him, he's going to be your refuge. This is the same thing that Satan was trying to do to Christ. All you got to do is just jump. He's supposed to be there immediately, so you won't dash your foot against the stone. He said, no, we're not supposed to tempt the Lord. The Lord is not a genie. He don't just come at any demand you call him. His will be done. Again, he, that's what he tried to do with Christ. He tried to what? Put his spirit of pride in him. Going into a covetous spirit or dealing with materials. Ask God, and all he's gonna do is give it to you. He had a video with Lil Boosie, a rapper named Lil Boosie. He talked about eating pork, and he said, All God do have to do is come down and tell me, son, this is how he said it. Son, do not digest the pork that you're about to put in your mouth. Something like that. And he said he'll look at God and basically flick him off. I hope he repent. But he said he'll flick him off. And he said, shoot, shoot. I'll call you later. This is what he said in the video on Instagram. I'll call you later when I need you. Right now, shoot, shoot. I'm going to eat this pork. This is what he had the audacity to say. But again, that's the mentality. That's that second tempt of the devil. All you got to do is tell God that he's at your every demand. Genie in the bottle. Just rub the lamp. And all you got to do is pray for it and it'll be there tomorrow. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Let's go back to Matthew. Hey, Cap, you know what's crazy, though? Even though Boosie, he said it out loud, in the Christian church, that's actually the same mindset. It is, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So they may not 
verbally say it uh, on a wide scale like that, but that's the thought. I can do whatever all of us done away with. I can do whatever I want, Cap. I can eat whatever I want. And then, you know what? McCall got laid. I mean, you heard that in the church where they say, you got to demand your prayer. <laughs> say, Lord, now! You got to demand your blessing. <laughs> Who said that? Like, what, what do you read that in the Bible? You, you cool. <laughs> He's actually fighting cancer right now. Oh, the boosie? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. See? Yeah. Tell me. It's the same spirit. It's the same spirit. Like the same spirit. Right. Demand your blessings. Like God, like, wait. He waiting on you to sit up and pray. Just pray. I'm going to give it to you. That's all you get. <laughs> No, that's not how it works. He's God. We're service to God. He give us things that we need. Daily bread. That's what that whole thing was about. Let's go back to Matthew. Matthew. Hold on. Go to Deuteronomy 6. We're still dealing with this second temple tem from the devil. And he came with scripture. Came as an angel of light. Let me use scripture. Let me be persuasive. Let's get Deuteronomy 6 again. The reason why he quoted, thou should not tempt the Lord. This is what Christ quoted. Again, going back into that same time period of being in the wilderness. Everything our forefathers was tempted with. Let's go back. Deuteronomy 6, verse 10. Deuteronomy. Chapter 6 and verse 10. And it shall be, when the Lord thy God shall, when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give thee great and, and goodly cities which thou buildest not. This is talking about going into the land of Canaan. Having these great goodly cities that are already built, you didn't have to put a hammer to or a nail to. It was already there. Read. And houses full of all good things Read. which thou fillest not. Read. And wells dig which thou diggest not. Vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not. Read. When thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord. Lest and, thou shalt forget the Lord. Read. And brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. I think I would. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's it. Verse 16? Yeah. I mean, chapter 6 and verse 16. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God, as ye tempted him in Massa. In Massa. So this is when Moses smit the rock. Um, we had, again, it was like, he turned the waters into sweet. The waters were bitter. All he had to do is make that sweet. we seen that. Now we need some water again. The rock was spitting. So it was like this demand thing. We need water now. That's what was going on with us in the wilderness. It was on demand. We've seen all these things before. Okay, now we need you to talk to most my most. Go talk to God. My children, they complain. You don't gotta hit us every night. They ain't coming to you for food. We need water. So I'm, I'm painting a picture for you. I'm being a little illustrated, but y'all know how we get. Yeah. We need water. We need food. We don't have it. We had all of these things in Egypt. Now we need water. So they tempted God. Basically, that old demanding spirit caused Mo Moses to sin. Smit the rock three times, water gushed out, but he did it out of order because the Mosai said at his demand, he said, shall we fetch you water? So it was a whole spirit that came out of that, that uh, prideful spirit or that covetous spirit. It resulted in Moses not seeing the promised land. So let's go back. Um, let me see what I have from here. Go back to Matthew chapter 4. Verse 7. This is the third one now. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 8. You, you're saying verse 7 because you haven't read it yet? Right. Read it. Verse 7. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Okay, we just read that. Read on. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So, Satan taking him up. Give me a second. Take, Satan taking him up and bringing him to a high mountain. He said, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Read on. Then says Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, 
Thou shalt not worship the Lord thy God in him. No, no, I'll read that again. I apologize. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Thou shalt only worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. I want to get some real quick and show you how this also goes with 1 Corinthians. Oh, excuse me, not 1 Corinthians. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Get that real quick. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. This is the same exact thing. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world. For all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. Things that you don't have. Again, that's going back into the first temptation. You don't have bread. Make stones into bread. Lust of the flesh. Things that you desire. Right? Read on. And the lust of the eyes. And the lust of the eyes. Okay. It says the lust of... Hold on, give me a second. My notes here. Okay. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. That's going into the materialistic things. So the things that you don't have. The desires. Okay. Which results in covetous. Or okay, uh, greed. It says the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. That's the second temptation. Okay, fall down and God will surely help you up. Talking about your status, things that you can gain out of asking God to save you. Read. And the pride of life. The third thing he tempted Christ with. You can have everything in this whole world. I'll give it to you if you fall down and worship me. That's the pride of life. Satan's tactics have not changed. They will never change. It's always these three. This is how he tempted Christ. The lust of the flesh, turning bread, uh, turning the stones into bread, the lust of the eyes, jumping down, and the Most High will protect you. That's the things that you want in your will, the lust of the eyes, your desires, the pride of life, having things that Satan will offer you, the world, everything that comes with, with it, the dominion, ungodly power of dominion, the pride of life. Read. It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. But is of the world. This is, again, that goes back to the same thing. So the last one he took it with is to be selfish. I'll give you all of this if you fall down and worship me. Now, if Christ would have dealt, took that, how would, he been, how would he have been selfish? Again, all of us wouldn't have forgiveness of sins as we have it, as we have it today if he would have took the offer that Satan gave him. I'll give you everything if you fall down and worship me. That would have been a selfish thing to do if Christ would have took it. Now, how could he died for the sins of man. He was going to get that anyway by being obedient to the Father because Christ, Christ said, well, the Father said, and I give all things to him. Satan tried to give it to him early. So I give you this now if you fall down and worship me. You don't got to sacrifice yourself. You're talking about dying for people? What about yourself? I give you all of this right now. All you got to do is worship. You don't got to go through anything, none of this. Do it right now and you have everything. Material. That's what he's going to tempt all of us with. These are, again, his three mm -hmm. tactics. He did it with Eve. Eve already had everything she wanted. So you, you can't turn, turn, turn stones into bread for what? Every tree of the garden is good for food. Right. You can have everything in the world. He made male, male and female in his image and let them have dominion over the earth. You already got that. But that second one, however, cast yourself down. Again, that's going into the things that you can get out of it. If you read that, you can have the same power your husband had. You're missing that. Don't you want that? You can have it. You can be a God like he can be a God. This is what you don't want. Again, that goes back into the lust of the eyes. He was able to get her with this one. Everything else he had. But again, it's the same tactics. He just tried the second one. You eat this, you'll be able to see, and you'll both be as gods. But wait, God said, if you eat that, you should surely die. But wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, you die, you're not going to surely die. Again, the second one is the same one he bought to Christ with the scripture. So he bought the same second one to, to Eve, and he also quoted what God said. You're not going to surely die. Wordplay. Wordplay, are you scripture? Same tactics. Satan don't change. He's going to come at us with, with the same tactic. His ammo, his ammo is always the same. So this is what we got to be aware of. 
from that, let's go back to Matthews. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to end it with this. Matter of fact, hold up. Before we end it with this, go back to Matthews. Read verse 10 again. Matthew chapter 10, chapter 4, and verse 10. Here's the key to it. This is how Christ actually overcame it. We understand how he dealt with it. Each one that he came with, he provided scripture. This is what you got to do. You got to provide scripture. And again, this is why the scripture constantly tells us to do what? Meditate therein day and night. So when you when temptation comes, you're not gonna have a Bible. Okay, I'm dealing with lust. Let me read scripture. Hold up. Ooh, thank God I had that Bible there. That's not how it's gonna happen. Let's be realistic. When it tells you to meditate there in the night, these words are supposed to be in you. So when you think about it now, this right here applies to this. Nah, Satan, not today. This would apply to that situation. So a lot of people say, keep it uh, as a. a, a well, let me go study that. No, no, it's supposed to be up here. You're supposed to remember these things. So when these sins do come, don't entertain it. Rebuke that spirit. You got to identify it first, like Christ identified. Man don't live by bread alone. Don't tempt the Lord. He identified that spirit. That's the only way you're going to be able to counteract that, that tactic. You can't ignore it. There's no way you can't ignore Satan. He, you can't do it. He's going to come with another one. He's going to come with a different one. You gotta approach it and say, oh, and do and do to Satan exactly do to Satan exactly the way Christ dealt with him, which is what I see. Read verse ten, Matthew chapter four, verse ten. Then said Jesus unto him, What do you say? Get thee hence. What do he do? Get thee hence. He rebuked the spirit. He identified the spirit and he rebuked the spirit. Don't ignore it. We all deal with lust. We all deal with. Uh, and, and when I mean by lust, I'm talking about desires, things ungodly. We all deal with that. But when it comes, don't sit there and ignore it and just say, you know what, and I, let me expel that. No. Find out why is it coming to you that way. Find out how does it relate to forefathers in the scriptures. How can I deal with this? Why am I thinking about this? What actually triggered this thought? What was I watching? Okay. Maybe I need to stay off Facebook. Maybe I need to get off Instagram. Maybe it's the people I keep in communication with. Because they, they was having this conversation. I didn't think it affected me, but maybe it did. You got to examine that thing. You have, to, you have to put it under a microscope. That's the only way you're going to be able to address it. And that's what Christ did. Get the hints. He acknowledged it, and he told that thought to get out. Read on. Get the hints, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And what happened? Then the devil leaveth him. And then the devil leaveth him. Read. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. That's the only way Satan left. He had to rebuke the devil. You understand? He had to rebuke the thought. Let's go back. To, let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. We'll end it with this. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. Again, the truth, the way, and the light. All of these things, they basically uh, connect. Even to the fact of knowing that when Christ was acknowledged to be the Son of God, real quick, I didn't even pull this point. When Christ was acknowledged to be the Son of God, right? This is my Son in whom I am well pleased, right? It was known, it was acknowledged, it was said in front of everybody. He received that title. And now he's led into the wilderness to see if he would actually stand up to that name. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 9. And Moses and the priests of the Levites spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel, this day thou... This day, this, when we were brought out of Egypt, this day... This day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Now you're, you're now known as the people of God. Again, having that title, that knowledge of knowing who we are, just like Christ knew who he was. Immediately after he, after it was declared who he was, he was led to be tempted of the devil. After we knew who we were, we become a great people, we was led to be tempted of the devil in the wilderness. They all relate. And now that same thing that related to Christ, this is my son whom I have called out of Egypt. It was said to us also in the book of Hosea. This is my beloved. Let's get it real quick. I, I don't want to make quote stuff when we do. 
scripture. Where is that at? Matthews. My uh, son, who am I going to call? 317? 15, yeah. And get the one in Hosea. Matthew. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17. And lo, a voice from uh, heaven. What, 15? Two, uh, 315? Yeah, 215. Matthew's 215. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 15. Yeah, that was it. And was there until death of Herod. So Christ, as a child, he was there until the death of Herod. Um, Joseph and Mary kept him back from Jerusalem because Herod was seeking to destroy the child that was prophesied to come, or the king that was to come. So he was there until the death of Herod. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Get that one in Hosea, read that real quick. You can just write it down. Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children. No, no, no. No, no. 11 and 1. 11 and 1? Yeah. Read 11 and 1. I'm sorry. Hosea chapter 11 and verse 1. It says, when Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. See how both of these, and I just found it, I guess, fascinating how both of them related to each other. We were called out of Egypt. And he said, this is my son, how I'm called out of Egypt. Then it was said to Christ, and then he was acknowledged as the son of God. We were acknowledged as the people of the Lord, and then we went into the wilderness, and Christ was led into the wilderness. We failed, he passed, and I was telling him to look to him because he became the author and finisher of our, our, our faith. And he was the way. So we have a prime example of what it is to now go back into the wilderness, wilderness and actually succeed this time. He is the key to salvation, basically. He is the knowledge of salvation. Let's go back to Matthews. He is a shadow of good things to come. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Matthew. Last one, you got something? Yeah, I have something wrong with you. Okay, this is my last one. Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Words of Christ. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. And again, it's going to go right back into what happened in the wilderness. It's going to go right back into it. Pay attention to what he's saying. After this manner, pray ye, therefore, read. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Read. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Read. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And for we don't live by bread alone, but by every word of God. But give us this day our daily bread. Read on. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our debtors and let us and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Read on. And lead us not into temptation. And don't lead us into temptation. Read on. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. Read on. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. Try to offer it to him the first time. The devil. No, he acknowledged. Look, this is the way you pray. I went through it, I experienced it, I'm going to tell you how to overcome it. Ask the most how to give you your daily bread. You pray, uh, ask for forgiveness for your debtors. It's not about the lust of the eyes, what you don't have and how you feel about it. it no, no, forget about that. Ask for forgiveness of your debt, and we forgive our debtors. The most high provide everything we need. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, it is not Satan's. Read. And the power. And the power. That's who power comes from. It's not about me jumping down and to see if I can test God's power. No, it's his power. He'll do what he want. Read. And the glory. And it is not about me. And the glory. His glory. Read. Forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. That's why he told us to pray that. Because again, that's what he experienced in the wilderness. And that's Satan's tactics. So he told us to pray in this manner so we can overcome every one of Satan's darts, fiery dark, darts to get us over, overthrown in the wilderness again. Or overthrown before we get to the wilderness in this time. Okay. okay that's right into what I'm going to say. So how did Christ overcome the devil then? That's the question. So how did Christ overcome the devil? Jonathan. Christ overcame the devil by using the word of God. 
you use the word of God, but it's a scripture that goes with that. Go to um, Ephesians 6, and read verse 11 and, and 13. He used the word of God, so what? Christ was, he was definitely prepared. He knew temptation was coming, so he's prepared. If he was acting like temptation wasn't going to come, like a lot of us doing is truth, we think we're getting the truth and everything's going to be good, we're not going to be tempted, we're keeping the commandments. Christ was prepared for the day. And this is what he, this is what, this is what the scriptures are. That's how I use the scriptures right here. Ephesians 6, starting verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So that's the fiery darts Cat was talking about. The, wild. the devil got tricks for all of us. The devil got tricks. That's what Paul is saying. Put, it's, it's a fight for the, the brothers and the sisters. You got to put on the whole armor. If you go out in the battle without your gear, you're going, you're going to get it. That's what Paul is using as an analogy. Put on the whole armor of God and read verse 13. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the devil, the, to withstand the evil day, and having so, done all. It says that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So Christ, the evil day, he prepared for it. He knew it was coming. And we got we to gotta all prepare for that evil day when it comes to us. We have the whole armor of God on, and we'll be able to stand the tricks of the devil. And it says, at the end of it says, and having done all to stand. So to do all you can stand, you got to, the, the armor is the commandments, like Brother Jonathan said. You got to keep all the commandments you can to protect yourself from all the tricks of the devil. Because he's coming. You know what I mean, there's no way, like I kept saying, there's no way around it. He is going to try to tempt us in that day. You got to prepare, like in the marriage. You got to prepare for an argument because you know what's coming. The Bible says trouble in the flesh, so you think you're going to go, you're going to have a marriage, you're going to be no trouble in the flesh? If you prepare for that trouble in the flesh to happen, then when it does happen, it may not last so long. The argument can be, the argument can be quick. The argument can, can be done with. The argument can be in a way where you're not harboring no ill feelings, in it, but it's going to come. He's going to get into an argument. Um, last thing, this is just a comment. Um, I'm looking at Hebrews. Hebrews, uh, what is it? Hebrews, where was it? I think it's Hebrews 10. Yeah, Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9 and 23. It said it, it was necessary, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves were better sacrifice than these. For Christ is not entered to the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the truth. But to heaven itself, now to appear, now to appear in the presence of God for us. So I'm looking at this and again, you can take it with a grain of salt. This was uh, basically, talking about how every how he laid out everything he represented the temple but i was looking at this like even when he did represent the temple he represented like going back into the class that we had he represented how to actually he is the god literally he was the god back then by the fire by night and the cloud by day but he's going to be literally the god now be the god now by the spirit the bible what we read and to know what to expect so he basically was a pattern of things back then, now, in the spirit. He's not gonna lead us by the cloud, by day, um, you know, that's not gonna happen again. It already happened. He's gonna be walking in the wilderness with us to see if we actually learn from his accomplishments. He's gonna put us on trial to see if we actually took something from his temptation. He basically just gave us everything that we need. He is literally the way, the truth, and the life. I can't say it no more. Uh, I, can't, I can't say it enough. No like, we don't have an excuse not to make it. Right. He's the author and the finisher. He's the beginning and the end. He's been through it, done it, and finished it. Let us hold fast our profession. He did just that great of a job. We can say it is our profession. We can be professional, professionals at obtaining the kingdom of the Most High. 
We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.